So today we're going to implement automatic user interaction inside your storybook stories, which means storybook will simulate user events such as typing, clicking, and so on. We're going to achieve this by using so-called add-ons, basically functionalities that aim to extend the storybook's normal features. I'm going to assume that you already have your storybook project set up, but in case you haven't, you can check out my previous storybook videos. Okay, to start off, we're gonna have to install a few dependencies. You can see them on screen, but I'm gonna leave them in the description anyways. You can now create a new component. I'm gonna call it login.view. I wrote this HTML for this component. I'm gonna go over the most important steps real quick. You can start out by creating an email input. Whatever you do, be sure to bind a label to it. And I did the same thing for the password. You can wrap things up now with a button. The important thing here is the role tag. And after this, the HTML is done and we can move to the style. I think it's looking pretty okay. Now we can go to the stories part of this video. So create a file, call it login.stories.js. And you know the spiel by now, but we're basically writing the template to make our story viewable in Storybook. After this, run the npm run storybook command and open up your browser and see how it's looking. You can make some adjustments, but it should be working pretty fine. So we can ensure more automation by using Storybook's play functions, aka small snippets of code to be executed after the story has rendered. We're going to borrow two objects from the Storybook's library. Screen, an object with which you can access rendered elements, and user event, which simulates events that may be emitted by a user, such as typing, clicking, etc. To test this out, we're going to grab all of our HTML inputs and the submit button. This is going to work by using so-called selectors, basically a way to query the DOM and get elements. We're going to grab the labels by their exact text and get their relative inputs. And as for the button, we're going to get it thanks to the role tag. Finally, we're going to use user type. We'll have to specify an element, what to write inside it, and its delay. We can also simulate a click event, passing the element to click on. You can open up Storybook again, and you should see how it played out. You're going to see that although the story appears to be working correctly, it's looking a little too seamless. To make this more believable, we're going to define a sleep function, which I've borrowed from Storybook, to wait before any interaction. So now I'm going to wait, let's say, one second before the story plays, then type some email address in the username input, do the same thing for the password, and then press the submit button. If you open up Storybook again, you can see that the interaction is much more believable, which means now we can start working towards validation. So go back to the login component. Here we're going to define a go to next function for our submit button. Next, I'm going to import link to, which is basically our way to navigate through stories. To make it work, you're going to have to make it available as an alias function. I chose the name link and I'm going to link it to my primary card. After I've done this, I'm going to define that go to next function and I'm just going to set a loading flag to true, which I'm going to later use to display a different message than submit and set a timeout, which means after two seconds, I'm going to call the link function. Finally, I'm going to make the loading flag available in the template and I'm going to conditionally show a message message, which is going to say, for example, loading if the button has been pressed. So open up Storybook again to see how it works, but you can see that now the submit button after an initial two seconds of delay is going to link us to whatever story we told it to. Automatic user interaction offers a further way of using Storybook, which is demonstrating the flow of a component. So I tweaked around a little bit and I created a more complex validation process, if you will, which is going to simply ask a user to click on a checkbox before logging in. But you can see the point in here. If you're interested in the code that I added, simply ask it in the comments. I'd be more than glad to help. If you have any feedback, I'd also really appreciate it. Thanks for your time. Thanks for watching and have a great day.